Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Today, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about the Retime Editor in this video. The Retime Editor, everything you need to do is gonna be found in this icon here that looks kinda like a speedometer from a card. We can go up here to our Retime Editor and select Speed if you want to. However, you can also push Command-R, which you can also do down here at the bottom. So if you click this arrow, you have all of those slow options, fast options, normal. We can go into Custom here. The first thing I'm gonna show Show you is the rate we shot this at 60 frames per second so if you do the math you can set this down to 40 percent speed and i can push enter and that will set the whole clip to 40 percent but you will notice that the length of the clip did not change even though we slowed this down to 40 percent and that is because of this checkbox ripple so if i click that and now i set it to 40 percent you'll see how it extended out the clip to that full 40 percent so that is super handy if you have a specific edit that needs to be a certain length, but you want it a certain speed, you just enable or disable that ripple setting. The duration here is, let's say we want this entire clip to happen over the duration of one second. Well, we would push one zero zero, and that's just because if you look at the time code here, it would be one, one second and zero zero on the frames. So we'll just push enter. So now this entire clip is gonna take place over one frame. We can also use automatic speed, which I love automatic speed because Final Cut Pro automatically does all the math for you and figures out how slow your clip should be. So if I had filmed this at 120 frames per second, it would automatically set this clip to 20%. Or if I had filmed it at 30 frames per second, it would automatically set it to 80%. And I use that so much that I actually set it up with a custom keyboard shortcut. There's a video that you can check out to see how to create custom keyboard shortcuts. And I just set it to option B and that saves me a lot of time because I use it on pretty much everything. Okay, so we got the custom settings out of the way. There are a few other options up here. So we have the hold frame. Now the hold frame is just like a freeze frame. If I push shift H, you can see this red area, which is holding. So it basically freezes the action. Now I strongly recommend that you do use the hold frame rather than a freeze frame. So the other option is option F, which is not in the retime editor, but that creates a freeze frame. Now the difference between the freeze frame and the hold frame is that the hold frame actually still enables you to have all of your settings here so like your color wheels and your LUTs and all that jazz the freeze frame is actually a baked in shot so um, all the effects you applied can no longer be changed on this so I definitely recommend that you actually use the hold frame over the freeze frame when possible moving forward we have blade speed now blade speed is the number one way to speed ramp your clips so if you select a clip you push shift b that will create a blade and shift b again and you can see these two points where it created the mark and you can also do that from the retime editor if you prefer now what blade speed does is let's say we want this middle segment to be super fast at 400 percent you will see that it ramps up from 40 percent to 400 percent and then back down to 40%. So that is what blade speed is really great at is for creating your own speed ramps. Now you will also notice these gray bars. The gray bars essentially indicate the duration of the ramp. So you can drag these gray bars way out and have the ramp happen a little bit slower or you could shorten them like crazy and almost out of existence if you wanted to to have it more instantaneous. Now at the end I will show you how to actually disable these gray bars all together. If we click here we've got the reverse clip and obviously that just reverses your clip just how you would expect. Now we can actually click it again and it will put it back to its normal direction. Reset speed is option command R and obviously that is, let's say that I have this drag way out and I'm like, ah, I don't really like that. You can push option command R and that will shrink it down to its normal speed, which is great, except for, um, I actually like to use shift N for that too. Uh, I find it a little bit easier. So as I already showed automatic speed and I added that keyboard shortcut. Speed ramp is interesting. Um, to me, it's more gimmicky than anything. So it's going to take the beginning of this clip from zero and it's going to slowly ramp it up over the duration of the clip. You can definitely use it if you want to. Um, however, I would prefer to just do this manually. It just gives you a little bit more control, but it's there if you like that type of editing. Instant replay. So instant replay, let's, I'll shorten this down so we get a better idea. So we select this 
we click on instant replay and we'll say we want it to play a 10% instant replay. You can see it, it plays through the clip and then it's got this blue section as if it's rewinding. So it's rewinding that entire clip in that one frame so that it's almost instantaneous. So it also adds in this title at the top that just slides in real nicely and then it plays the rest of the clip at 10% speed. So you can definitely use that. However, in my opinion, I would actually rather just do it manually. I'd push option and that would duplicate the clip, command R, and then I'd slow it down to whatever speed I want. I would just find that a little bit easier to work with in my opinion and gives you a little bit more control, but that's totally up to you. Next is the rewind feature. Now rewind is very similar to instant replay. However, once it finishes playing through the entire clip, it rewinds it at the selected speed and then replays the clip at normal speed. Jump cut at markers. Okay, so jump cut at markers is actually quite cool. So let's say I just add in a bunch of markers, push M to create markers, and maybe you did it to a song or something like that and you want the edits to happen on the music. You just select your clip and you do jump cut at markers and we'll do 30 frames to really show it happening. Whenever there is one of those markers, you can see that blue icon indicating that it's speeding it way up. So it'll play through and it'll just jump cut the video right on all those markers. So you can definitely use that if if you are editing to some music or something like that. Okay, the next one is very, very important and that is the video quality. So video quality has more to do with the slow-mo quality than it does the actual video. So if, let's say I slow this down to 10% speed and I play it back, you can see how choppy the playback is. And that's even on a 60 frame per second video. So what the video quality options are, if we click this, we go to video quality and there are two options, frame blending and optical flow. Frame blending is from um, a much older version of Final Cut Pro. It's like, uh, I think Final Cut 7 even had it. The best way to describe it for me would be kind of cross dissolves between each frame. So it does work and some uses it actually works quite well. The other option, which is better in my opinion in most circumstances is the optical flow. So essentially what optical flow is doing is it's looking at the two frames and then it's creating almost a morph edit between the two frames. Preserve pitch. Now preserve pitch actually has to do more with the audio side of things. So we have our audio and if I play this back at normal speed, it sounds like this. Now, if I were to retime this and drag this out to like 9% and you listen, it's very echoey sounding. And that's just because Final Cut Pro is doing some crazy mathematics and raising the pitch, even though it's slowed down. So it'll be at the, the same pitch that it originally was just much slower. But if we select the option preserve pitch and disable that, it will now be at a much lower tone. So that can be a great way to get some more use out of your sound effects. You could even speed it up faster to get a higher pitch out of it. It should be noted that you cannot enable or disable preserve pitch unless you've applied some retiming to it first. So if this is grayed out, that's why. And last but not least is speed transitions. So once again, if I created two speed edits here and I sped this one up to eight times, you can see the gray bars there. If we select our clip and we disable speed transitions, those gray bars will no longer exist. That's just disabling the speed ramp feature um, and just making a hard cut to the speed, just like that. If this video was helpful, consider pressing that like button. Also, if you wanna know one more secret the Retime Editor has, make sure you check out this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.